Hello YouTube land and welcome to the Get In and Get Out Nintendo podcast episode 66. Three to go for the big one. I don't know what we're going to do, but Calderas, we need to come up something big for the big 69. I am your host, Dantes. And of course, joining me like always, Caliones. How you doing, Caliones? Hey, how you doing, Dantes? How you doing, everybody? And... Uh, yeah, once again, uh, we are yeah doing the beginning and get on Nintendo podcast. Last week, um, we got a little bit creative because uh, we had recorded something previously that we could you know finally bring forward be- you know because of some rumors and things like that that are popping up. Uh, so you know, Dante made a great suggestion, and that's how we came up with the uh, the N64 uh, getting and get out for this one. Um, we are still kind of like trying to scratch the surface of the news from the week. Uh, Nintendo's not really giving us too much uh, to discuss. Uh, or in any other anybody else that makes you know games for Nintendo for that matter. So uh, hopefully we're gonna be able to you know, talk about it and do a little bit you know like get to the 30 minute, 40, 50 minutes depending on how how long it goes. Uh, but uh, Dantes, uh, you know just so I just continue talking, uh, go ahead and get it started. So uh, let's do that rigor roll so we can start the show. Like Kalina said, there's not much news, but we'll try our best to bring what we have with some fire. But I want to welcome everybody to the Get In and Get Out Nintendo podcast, episode 66, right here at the Force in Unison Gaming channel. Please remember to subscribe, like, and comment so you can make these two crazies MF happy. Also, remember, if you don't want to see ugly faces, it's all good. We got a solution for you. Go to SoundCloud and iTunes and download this podcast for free. Read us over there so you can show some love. Uh, also... Go to the description box below so you can see the full channel schedule. Tomorrow, hopefully, I will be back, if work allows it, to PlayStation Mondays and, of course, play a little bit of Spider-Man for your entertainment. Uh, also, Facebook page at Forcing Unison Gaming. And finally, Endante says finally, go to forcingunison.wordpress.com and get some clicks and love to my boy Caliones. With all that said... Are you guys ready? I said, are you ready? For the no one in attendance and the nine people watching around the world, let's get ready for Reggie's Hot Topics of the Week. My body, ready, my body is ready. My body's ready. And uh, Caliones, the first piece of news, again, because we were trying to scratch the surface, was the big, big game this week for the Switch. Came out of Ubisoft, but it had a little bit of a Nintendo touch to that game. And, of course, I'm referring to Starlink Battle for Atlas. And I want to let Caliones here in the show give us his first impressions of the game so Caliones, take it away. Well, um, I mean, as, as far as the game, uh, and I'll say this, uh, when you think of Ubisoft, you think of, you know, 27 thing, uh, you think of them uh, making a Nintendo game in the form of uh, Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle, and then, you know, 2018 rolls around, and they're basically doing the, the same thing, coming up with not necessarily a full game, but you know, an add-on or uh, a story mode, you know, exclusive for the Nintendo Switch console, um, in the form of you know the Star Fox uh, content. So, uh, for those of you, you know, Starlink Battle for Atlas, it was announced back in E3 2017, and it is uh, a toys to life uh, type of game. Uh, it takes you know a place in space. You're always in, inside a ship. Uh, you can you know customize the ship with you know different pilots, weapons. Um, you can uh, do you know like. Uh, just combine different parts from you know, different ships as well, and you can also uh, level them up in, in a way uh, from the um, you know the, the currency that you get gain from uh, the game itself. So um, the game, it I would say it's kind of like a cross of like a No Man's Sky type exploration, but uh, a lot more action, of course, um, and it doesn't have the uh, the pilots you know getting out of the ship and and walking around so it's not going to be you know like the full you know no mind sky experience but uh ubisoft has done a great job with it uh starlink by itself um it is um you know so far it is a good game like i said i'm, I'm giving uh, my impressions of the game because i haven't finished that yet completely 
But um, yeah, so far, um, not only is does the game feel good, so without the uh, the Star Fox content, I would feel like yeah, you know, the money that I put into the game, it's uh, worth it. But having that you know coat of paint in the form of Star Fox, uh, it just makes it even more memorable. Um, and of course, you know that's one of the surprises that we had this year at E3 is when they finally announced the Star Fox uh, content would be uh, coming to the Switch version. And to tell you the truth, this actually, in a way, uh, erases, you know, to some extent, the bad taste that you know Star Fox Zero left when it came out on the Wii U. I know that some people, uh, you know, like Star Fox Zero. Uh, you know, some of the other uh, mechanics um, and controls uh, do, you know, feel great, but it felt like um, it forced you to use the gamepad. Um, and I believe Platinum Games did suffer a little by having uh, Yuga Miyamoto uh, put his you know, footprint into the game. And it kind of took away from the experience um, yeah, that is a, a Star Fox game, yeah, especially the, um, the on-rails arcade um, you know, shooter uh, portion, which you know, felt like it did slow down when you had to go through you know, different shifts and, and unlock different things um, and such. But... This, uh, to me, I'll say that even though it is not a Star Fox game from the ground up by any means, but I believe uh, Ubisoft should be given a chance to work on a, on a completely new Star Fox game. Um, and I believe that they're, you know, based on what they've shown from here, not only will they get the graphics, uh, the gameplay, and the action, but also... Uh, the the cinematics and the story uh, could be greatly improved from other games. So um, even though it's a snippet uh, of what, um, I mean, that I've played, but I would probably go back to maybe that like the, uh, the Star Fox Armada or, you know, back to those games. So it's, um, it is better than the, the Wii U and the, the most recent uh, Star Fox game. Um, probably would feel like um, close to being my favorite since the Nintendo 64 version of it. Um, so, you know, so, and, and like I said, you know, I, I still haven't finished the game. Uh, the, and the Star Fox content, it's not like the entire game. So it's not you're going to play, you know, 5, 10, 12 hours of Star Fox. It's going to be probably close to uh, an hour and a half, two hours uh, at most. And But you can still play the entire game uh, using, you know, Fox Macau anyway. So it's it, i mean it is it is there uh, it is good it scratches the itch it makes you forget about Star Fox Zero and you do get to uh enjoy and appreciate the game so i'm i'm glad i'm i'm happy and and that's uh for the game itself then of course you know like the uh, the, the kid side of me the one that you know gets me ecstatic is like you know things like this where uh, you actually get to have like. I'm showing toys. gameplay. They won't be able to see it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so well, so go ahead and so take the wait, game when you come back, uh, whenever the gameplay goes away, I'll put it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, once it goes, uh, I'm gonna show the um, the yeah the, the toys or basically the R wing, uh, which is uh, exclusive to Nintendo Switch version, um, and it just feels great like putting it together and having it displayed uh, on your uh, you know on yourself. But of course, yeah, like using it in the game. Um, it's it's an, an amazing experience, and I believe that you know kids and adults uh, will greatly appreciate the game. I know that you know in your case you're not a big fan of Star Fox, so you know if you're not a big fan of Star Fox, the game is probably not for you. But for those of you that are fans, uh, you will enjoy it. And I want to take a quick break to say, you know, shout out to uh, PSW Xbox. Uh, welcome to the stream, Dick. Welcome to the stream, and RX Gaming. Uh, welcome, welcome. So, uh, Dantes. So, a couple of questions. Yes. So, how does the toys interact with the game? So, I know it's a Toys for Life game, and most of the Toys for Life games are a simple tap into a portal, and then you use the character or whatever. In the Nintendo case, we don't even know what the type of Toys for Life game they use it for. But I'll give you an example, for Breath of the Wild, if you tap in any uh, uh, Zelda amiibo, you would get like items uh, during the game. So, how is the interaction? Let's start with that first question, with the toys uh, uh, life type of interaction with the game. Okay, so I mean, uh, basically the interaction is pretty simple. And if you have a ship and you put it on your base, uh, the ship is gonna appear on the game. <laughs> 
Same thing with the pilot. If you select that specific pilot, you're going to put the pilot. It's going to show like a small cutscene uh, of that uh, specific pilot, and then that's going to be the one that you're going to be using in the game. Uh, same thing with the uh, with the weapons or wings and, and things like that. So um, it is um, you know, pretty straightforward. You do have to know like what type of weapons, uh, what they do, um, what they're good against. You know, like uh, with certain effects uh, against certain enemies and things like that. Uh, so hopefully, um, I'll be uh, putting that together uh, in the next uh, you know, uh, week or two, and I'll you know try to say what combinations work better against you know with what type of enemies. Uh, for those of you that you know want to go into the game and and want to uh, you know, or or that you want to know more or less what type of weapons uh, you would like to get. Uh, but uh, as far as uh, the game, it does come with. Uh, you know, two different weapons. It comes with the R-wing. It comes with um, the uh, the Fox McCloud uh, character, and I have the uh, the box over here. Um, which well, I'll, I mean, you want me to uh, shut off uh, gameplay so you can uh, show it? Let me shut off gameplay. So, Caliones will now show the toys. Let's take that out. We're back, Caliones. Go ahead. Show okay, the toys. So, so the first thing would be uh, the base. Uh, so when you uh, come with the base. It's uh, that's where you put your uh, joy cons. So um, you have the base here. You slide the joy cons uh, in place, and that allows you to, you know, whenever you put like a like a piece or anything on here, uh, it is gonna recognize it. So uh, you have the uh, the pilots. Uh, in this case, uh, you have uh, Fox McCloud. Uh, then you have, I uh, believe, it is uh, right here. Uh, Mason uh, Rano, which is you know basically the uh, the main hero of the uh, the Starlink Battle for Atlas game. Uh, once you uh, select your pilot, you would you know slide in in place and would connect it uh, into the base. Uh, so once you connect it on there, uh, the game is going to recognize the pilot. It's going to give you a, a cutscene for the pilot, and then um, the pilot is going to appear. Um, yeah, like on the screen, so you know uh, which one it is. Then uh, you start putting the the ship. In this case, is uh, a piece of the R wing, and that goes on top of the pilot, and it connects uh, on here, so it recognizes the type of ship that you're using as well. Um, and you can do the same thing with the wings. Uh, in this case, it's going to be the R wing. Uh, so uh, you put them in place. And uh, same thing with the other one. And right here, um, even though you have the uh, the ship in place, uh, you still have the opportunity of uh, like connecting certain weapons. Um, I mean, it just for if you want to know, like you, know, you can you know play with this and um, you know whichever way you want to uh, put it. But even though this is more for aesthetic than anything else, uh, but then you have the um, the different weapons on here. You have like um, I guess, uh, you know, like a flamethrower type, uh, which is uh, fire. Uh, same thing with so the... Every time uh, you connect one of those weapons, it comes up in the game and you can use it? Uh, yes, it comes up in the game, but you can see it, um, like, it uh, appearing on the game itself. So whenever you remove a weapon, it disappears. When you connect another one, it'll appear on there. So you can see it on the screen while it happens. So you cannot uh, get, get that? You have to buy those weapons separately to get different uh, type of weapons, or you can get some weapons in the game? Well, uh, it all depends. I mean, there's uh, certain game, uh, weapons that you can get in the game, but uh, if you want to get those, uh, for the most part, yes, you have to buy them separately, either the physical uh, weapons or uh, you can buy them digitally uh, for the game. And I'll, and I'll explain that, you know, how it works. Uh, and with the weapons itself, uh, if you put them on, um, let's say you're fighting against somebody in front of you, uh, you'll put them, you know, facing forward, of course, so you can attack that way. Uh, same thing if if a ship is backwards, you know, behind you, you can you know like uh, twist it around, put it facing backwards, and that way you can attack somebody behind you while you're flying. But um, for those of you that don't like to you know like to have something like this, you know, most of the time, uh, or you know if you enjoy just playing with the pro controller, uh, once you scan a weapon, a ship, a pilot once, it's gonna be saved on the game. So. If you ever want to switch weapons or pilots or anything, uh, you can go in, into the game menu and you can do the swap there. So you don't have to, you know, every single time, uh, you know, take something off, put another one on, and and, and keep doing the uh, the uh, the changes. So, um, as far as the um, the box, uh, this is well quickly. Um, 
Yes. Uh, RH Gaming asks, what about the Pro Controller? I think you explain it, that you don't need yes. the toys to play with the Pro Controller. But I don't know if you wanted to expand of the use of the Pro Controller. Okay. And uh, I want to say hi to Cynthia and to Carmen uh, Galgon. Uh, welcome to the stream. But yes, uh, RX... Um, yes, the, the Pro Controller can be used uh, with the game. You don't have to uh, use uh, just this one. Uh, that's why um, you can buy the physical um, figures uh, to use and, and, and you know, weapons and things like that to use there. Or uh, you can also buy them digitally. That way uh, you, you already have everything in the game and you don't have to do any physical swap of anything on there. So, so you can do it either way. There's also... Uh, the deluxe version of the game, I believe it retails for $74.99 or something like that. And it does include all the weapons, all the pilots, and all the chips. Um, but of course, it's digital, so it's not, you don't have the, like, the physical uh, you know, uh, figures or anything like that. In my case, uh, going physical is more expensive, of course. But at the same time, uh, I mean, you know, we're the type of people that we like to like display things. Uh, I've seen like you know all your amiibos and things like that behind you. Uh, same thing behind me. So of course I want to get the the R wing and I want to get the the physical ships and and things so we can show you know like display them prominently in, in our homes. But, so question: So you bought them to play with them, toys? Did you take them to your bathroom when you take a bath and play with them as you shower? Just just wondering. Uh no. I do not, but I don't take anything uh, to the bathroom anyway. So I'm not somebody that's gonna be taking those. I, but technically, oh, in the bath you go pew 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 pew, and you go wee, and you move the chip around. You you pew 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 pew. Yeah, right. No, that that's that's what you buy those toys for, right? No. When you're a kid, you take toys to the bathroom to uh, to play. When you're an adult, you go to the restroom and to take a shower and sing. So I mostly sing. I don't, I don't really play with anything. Okay, just just wondering because that's, I mean uh, that's, what, that's what adults do. They they sing when they take I a shower. I don't sing. I don't sing. I just don't sing anymore. I listen to podcasts while I take a bath now. That's that's okay. what I do now. Uh anyway. So okay. So yeah, it's another toys for life thing. I don't know if it's gonna be successful. So Calienes, yeah. you have what? um. So yeah, this is just uh, like two of the uh, uh the other pilots. Uh, so you can see I haven't opened them. Because I feel bad opening things when they're uh, like this, and the only thing reason you I play open with them is if you can't open them. Ah, it's, it's. I mean, it looks so good like this. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna. Like I said, I'm. I'm gonna be doing a, a a mini strategy guide on the game and how different pilots and different weapons and things like that work. So you know uh, which ones are better against certain enemies. So I'll, I'll have to open them, but I'll go ahead and go through the game first with Star Fox because that's what Nintendo fans do. They only play Star Fox for the entire game, and then I'll I'll go back and and do the other ones. But but yeah, um, I mean the, the box is it's not really uh, big, it's uh, small. Uh, it does come with the uh, with the case uh, for the game as well, uh, and it is um, a physical copy of the game. Even though um, if you even if you get a physical copy of the game, uh, there is still I believe like a four gigabyte download uh, that you have to ha uh, do once you get the game. So. That's why when I got the game, it took me, I had to wait like half an hour or 45 minutes before I could play it because of the uh, the download. Uh, but yes, they have, uh, if you can kind of see here, like the uh, you know the different pilots, uh, weapons, chips uh, that you can get. But like I said, um, you can get them physically or you can get them digitally. Uh, so, so yeah, it just, it, it depends on how you do it. Like it, it is cheaper to go digital because you can get everything uh for a fraction of the price that you will go physical but uh at least the this is actually not as expensive as like the uh, the Disney infinity skylanders uh even the amiibo figures uh yes they're a, a fraction of the size uh but the pilots are something around like seven dollars and 99 cents the weapons are like nine dollars and 99 cents and i believe the ships are 24.99 uh, so there, actually, it's not really that bad when it comes to the price. Um, but it's, um, I mean, it's, you know, for those of you that like to collect, uh, the, the the collectibles, they look great. Uh, if you put them on a shelf, uh, I mean, hopefully you'll put them on a shelf after you play the game and don't just buy it to, like, set it on a shelf and not enjoy the game. But uh, it is you know, nice to play with, nice to see. And, and overall, I'm convinced that uh, Ubisoft would be, 
a great prospect to work on a good Star Fox game. So, do you agree with the reviews? I know you ha you haven't played the whole game, but you know a lot of the reviews. The game has like a seventy something on Metacritic, which I don't think is awful, but it's not great either. But a lot of the reviewers call the game repetitive. Do you feel the game is repetitive? What you have played, or just because of the, uh, I guess, exclusive feature of playing with Star Fox that it does make a difference? Well, uh, before I answer that question, just go ahead and do a quick shout out to. Ah, uh, the person on the chat. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's that guy, 69, 69. We're getting close to his favorite number, 69, on the Get In and Get On Nintendo podcast. But go ahead, Calinas. Okay, so, um, yeah, what I would say is, um, yes, uh, it is repetitive uh, oh, because, yeah. uh, I mean, and it, that's why, you know, some of the comparisons to, like, a game like No Man's Sky uh, are merited is because, I mean, there is some, I mean, quote unquote, farming that you have to do. You have to get, uh, like, you know, certain elements and things like that, so you can upgrade like your bases in, in the, I mean, in the different planets and such. Um, they, it does there's the same thing as you know, like going from planet to planet, and and it's it, it's kind of like a continuous planet where you don't have really have loading. Uh, you just fly into the planet, uh, or you fly from the planet into space uh, without having uh, any loading screen or anything like that, but. Um, as far as, you know, the repetitiveness, uh, yes, it does feel like, uh, repetitive, uh, to some extent, there are not that many different enemies, uh, available. Uh, but the, uh, what I would say is that, um, Ubisoft made this game, uh, with, of course, you know, with the, uh, with the figures and the ships and everything in mind, and they are going to be continuing to expand on it. So, that's probably why, you know, one of the reasons why it does feel to some extent repetitive because uh, they wanted to go ahead and get the game out and then continue to expand on it. So um, for those of you, um, again, if you are a Star Fox fan, the experience of Star Fox, it's, uh, I mean, from what I played, it's worth it, but it's going to be limited. Don't expect the entire game uh, to be a, a Star Fox story. It's, it is a startling Battle for Atlas story. And Star Fox happens to be in this on the same galaxy. Uh, hopefully, that means that they share the same universe, and they uh, will continue to appear on any other episodes or or things like that. If uh, Ubisoft continues to uh, you know to expand the story or do additional sequels, but um, it's just go with that in mind. It is not all action like normally uh, you feel on Star Fox games, and it's not going to be about you know Fox McCloud and and his uh group so the story like i said it takes about an hour and a half to two hours to complete this the star fox storyline uh but everything else will be uh startling even though you can use uh fox macau for the entirety of it okay i think that was the early impressions for caliones seems like he likes the game uh let us know in the comment section if you guys really enjoy the game uh, if you have played it, I am not a big Star Fox fan, so I'm not interested. I would like, though, to me, the, the, the franchise to move forward with a mix of, imagine, like, a lot of planets where you would travel and you have those space battles, but then you also then would go to those planets and explore the planets like Breath of the Wild. Don't mean that you have to make as big as Breath of the Wild, but something explorable. Imagine, Kalionis. Perfectly reasonable, right? In my opinion. Um, and we're going to talk about it just next. Xenoblade Chronicles, right? In Xenoblade Chronicles 2, you go to each Titan. And each Titan has a sizable place to explore, right? So imagine a Star Fox game where you would travel. You have the space battles, of course. And then you go down to those planets and explore and do missions. And you would say, well, that came out in GameCube already. Did not work out. Well, it can work out if, it do if it's done right. Well, I just don't believe Star Fox can't stay as it is, just like a, it's like a, a space shooter, and that's it. Uh, if they want to expand the franchise, that's my opinion, Calionis. But I don't know if you want anything to add before we move to the next subject. Well, um, uh, what I would say is, I believe that uh, if they were to do a proper Star uh, Star Fox game, uh, they can probably do it similar to how you know Star like uh, um. To Starling Battle for Atlas is uh, because I, you know usually on a Star Fox game there's about anywhere from like 12 to 15 planets 
Uh, so it would be pretty easy to do a galaxy composed of those, you know, let's say, you know, 15 planets where you can, you know, travel into the planet, visit it and, and, you know, do any battles or anything like, you know, that you're going to be doing. So uh, it is possible to do um, a Star Fox game if they do a proper Star Fox uh, it would be more action based uh, than anything. I'm pretty sure some things are, are going to be uh, on rails, uh, you know, shooting. But uh, with the Starlink um, open battle for Atlas, open world uh, or open, uh, well, I guess in, in some extent open world because you can move uh, around. You're not just looking at one straight view. You can go in and out, uh, travel or across a planet, out of it, going into another one. Uh, so you, it's pretty much open with what you can do, but. Uh, I think that sort of freedom is what Star Fox uh, is missing to be able to hit that next uh, level when it comes to the, the the proper progression of the Star Fox games. Yep, we shall see. Like I said, another uh, template that they could steal is Ratchet and Clank. Similar, right? You would travel planet to planet in a spaceship, but expand on the on the space travel where you would get the the on rail shooter aspect of it as you travel planet to planet. But then when you go into the planets, you have more platforming type of game with Mac Fox McCloud having guns. And even 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 he could bring his ship in some areas in the planet and have some space battles in the same planet, too, as part of the mission. Use the, the Russian and Clank template. It's proven. It worked great last time for for uh, Insomnia games with like Russian and Clank did really well. So on uh, Nintendo, use the template. I think Star Fox deserves better. That's what I'm saying. You got a good IP. Expand on it if you can. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I—I I mean, I just don't want the uh, the chicken to come back, or the R wing when it can becomes a chicken. That's that's about the only design that I don't really like. Uh, I mean, the the tanks and things like that. They're 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 uh, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah the chicken yeah. on Star Fox too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, but and uh, our train said, um, I don't feel like they would do something like that because look at Kirby is the same uh, every game 2D and EC every time. Um, but I think uh, what I would say with that is that uh, Kirby is, I mean, it, it does have different game designs, but uh, it is done like that because that's, I mean, that's just how uh, Kirby is. That's how how uh, designs Kirby, and that's how everybody expects uh, the Kirby games uh, you know, to continue to do, and they sell great. I mean, uh, Kirby games sell better than Star Fox games. You know, Star Fox is the one that doesn't sell as good as those, you know, those other games, uh, so it, it needs that change in formula because... The the games are, are are pretty good. Even the great Star Fox game, they still would not sell uh, as good as you know they should have. But uh, Nintendo needs to change the formula a little, and uh, yeah, and Ubisoft, um, I believe, are the ones to do it. Uh, they can give it a more cinematic um, look to it, and and hopefully that added you know like story uh, and cinematic feel to the game would get you know the game recognition that that it deserves. Okay. But with that, Caliones, let's move to uh, a favorite topic of mine. I can't speak about Xenoblade forever and ever. But some news came out this week. Uh, they were interesting. Everybody expects the Xenoblade Chronicles X port to come to the Switch. It looks like they're not working on it. That is not that easy. But go ahead, Caliones, take it away. And then we can have a nice discussion on the future of the Xenoblade franchise. Okay, so uh, yeah, this comes from uh, Takahashi. Um, uh, he was, you know, talking about, uh, you know, Xenoblade Chronicles X uh, and and the expectations of uh, possibly getting a port from the game. So uh, what he said, it's um, and this is uh, you know, um, it was uh, from US Gamer. They were uh, uh, talking uh, to him, and he said that uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X, it is something that he would like to do, especially getting a port over to the system, but that it is a massive game. And recreating it would be really difficult. So, uh, you correct me if I'm wrong, Dante. But what I get from this is that they are not working on the game. They're not putting the game right now. It is something that they would like to do, but they haven't even started it. So, um, I mean, we, in a way, we kind of hope that uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X would be a game that uh, would be in the process of you know, getting ported over. That maybe this year or next year, uh, the game would be coming out. But from the sounds of it, they haven't even started. Uh, so in a way, it, it's kind of like um, bittersweet because we're not getting the game yet, but it means that they're putting that development time into another game. Now that they're done with Torna, maybe they're working on Xenoblade Chronicles 3, maybe they're working on Xenoblade Chronicles X2, 
um, or maybe something else entirely. So, so, so what, what's your take from this, Dantes? So I think everybody thought, oh, it's so easy because uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was using the same engine as Xenoblade Chronicles X. So everybody was saying, oh, it's going to be so easy to port the game. But you guys have to remember, too, even though they're using the same engine, it doesn't mean that the game is, is easy to port just in the sense that they were. this is a Wii U game. The Wii U was a different structure. It is not an uh, NVIDIA car like the Switch now. So again, it's 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 a different way how you develop the game. So even though they're using the same engine, it doesn't mean oh it's so easy to port, which is sad because I would really like to see a Xenoblade Chronicles X port for sure. Uh, and and I, again, it just depends: is it there? Can they outsource this to Calionis? Because to your point, they finished tour now right now. They're done with Xenoblade Chronicles too. So that team could be moving to a new Xenoblade, a small-scale Xenoblade. Again, that small team, 40 people, uh, uh, 50 people, whatever. They're expanding. They're getting more crews. And you guys have to remember, Monolith Soft is divided into multiple teams. One team is just dedicated in supporting Nintendo first-party games. The other team right now is building this new IP that we believe we don't know what it is, but we know it's a new IP based on some pictures that have come out on the Internet. And, of course... The 13 could be working now into like a Xenoblade Chronicles X or uh, X2 or a Xenoblade Chronicles 3. We don't know. As you guys who play Xenoblade Chronicles X know that that game ended in a big ass cliffhanger, like a hardcore cliffhanger. It wasn't like, what happened? No, that was a cliffhanger. And you were like, the game cannot end this way. And and it sucked because now the question is, do you do they want to do this game again? knowing and seeing that people are enjoying more the JRPG aspect of Xenoblade Chronicles when you have Xenoblade Chronicles 2 selling as it did and Xenoblade Chronicles X being more Western would, would then Mona Lisa go back a little bit and say, oh, well, maybe it's better to keep doing a Xenoblade Chronicles 3 than a Xenoblade Chronicles X2. And more than they're maybe doing because of what they learned from Xenoblade Chronicles X, the new IP, could be more western in style or they could be adding those mmo type of of uh features that the original xenoblade chronicles x had to this new game so they're moved away it feels like they move away out of xenoblade chronicles x completely which is sad because again that cliffhanger just is it sucks but again wii u was bad no one bought the wii u so games like this who are great uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X specifically were so good in how big this open world was, how expansive you can lose hours and hours in this game. That is sad that it may not come to the to the to the Switch. Now, I will say this: I think this game could be easily ported with maybe someone like Panic Bottom doing the port, and it's gonna be a tough port probably because how huge this game is. But Panic Button, again, we're going to talk about it later. They like the challenge. So maybe they can do it. Now, in my head, what I would like to see from them in the Xenoblade franchise, two things. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 so really well. I think it's made the company enough money that they're expanding right now. The money that they get from developing Nintendo first-party games and the sales that they got from Xenoblade Chronicles is, grow, is making this company grow a lot, Kalionis. So what I would like to see is one thing. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 had a lot of things that happened in the story that had a lot of impact if you would have played the original Xenoblade Chronicles 1. So what I think is that a lot of people deserve to go back and play that original that a lot of people miss, again, because it was a short supply game. Thank you, Nintendo of America. Uh, only a GameStop exclusive when it came out. Uh, that a lot of people may not have the chance to play it. Then it came out also digital for the Wii U, which that helps. But again, not a lot of people own the Wii U. So, you know, I think Xenoblade Chronicles 1 remake, I'm saying remake, full remake with the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 engine. I think that's what I would like to see for sure. Because again, for the new crowd, the new people who became fans like RX Gaming, who said that he became fan, never played a Xenoblade Chronicles in his life. Not a big RPG guy, placing over Chronicles and fell in love with it. 
he's missing on key story pieces that happen in that game than people like me who played the original were like, oh my God, all oh, this shit is awesome. But they missed it. They don't know what, why I said, oh my God, this shit is awesome, right? So I would like to see that. But that could be done by a small team, Carlos. That could be done. Work slow. Don't need to be in a hurry. If it takes you four or five years, takes you four or five years to make the remake, work with a team of 20 or 30 people, only working on that specifically, right? But then have another crew working on Xenoblade Chronicles 3 to advance the franchise because I think the Xenoblade franchise is two Xenoblade games, full-blown Xenoblade games, Calionis, in less than four years, four or five years, right? That's a lot of Xenoblade. They may need a break. They may want to focus on the new IP. So I think we get the new IP, we get the remake of Xenoblade Chronicles 1, and then we get Xenoblade Chronicles 3. That would be my dream. Anyway, anything to add, Calionis? Well, um, I would say, like, if, if Nintendo's going to treat the Xenoblade series as, like, you know, they do the uh, the Mario, the Zeldas, and, and those where... Uh, they expect on every new generation of a Nintendo system to have a uh, Xenoblade in it. Uh, then I believe that you know Monolith Soft, they're probably not, they're not going to be happy releasing one single game every five years or so. So the best thing for them to do, and this is what I w I hope they do, is that they continue with the Xenoblade Chronicles series, and then they continue with the Xenoblade Chronicles X series as well. And what this would do is uh, they would be able to work on, you know, uh, two different games and release them, uh, you know, like both of them every generation, maybe two or three years apart uh, from one another. And this way they would be able to make a game close to the launch or during the first year of the system, then release the, the other game uh, probably two or three years afterwards. And then two or three years after had have the, uh, the sequel of, you know, let's say Xenoblade Chronicles uh, 4. Uh, or you know three or four have it ready for the launch of the next system and and so on and so forth and yes uh the uh, the games are xenoblade uh, chronicles games and they take place in the same uh universe uh, but they're different enough where uh i mean you can uh you're not gonna it's not gonna feel saturated because you have your jrpg experience uh with the xenoblade chronicles series and then you have the fantasy star online type experience which is more online more co-op if they expand on that aspect uh with the single blade chronicles x uh series so this is that's what i would like uh, to see them do of course I, I still would like to see them come up with a new ip and and hopefully if they come up with a new ip they'll be you know they're making enough money so that they can continue to expand and then have you know those uh, like coming out but i think that uh, a cycle of Xenoblade Chronicles, Xenoblade Chronicles X, um, you know, having those two franchises release at least once on every generation of a Nintendo systems, I think that probably would work. So uh, am I sad that Xenoblade Chronicles X may not be ported over to the Switch? Yes, definitely. Indeed, I'm, I'm sad. And that's because uh, the game, and this is going by VG Charts, uh, the last study that they have for the game uh, in sales is actually 840,000 copies sold. And this is uh, physical. It's not digital. So That's pretty so that's, good for a small, um, how we call yeah. it, small uh, install base from the Wii U, yes. honestly. So, so yes, uh, with the install base, uh, it probably would have gone closer to the 1.5, maybe 2 million. Uh, I mean, if, the, uh, if instead of selling 13 million uh, systems like the Wii U, it would have been closer to 100 million like the Wii. Uh, but still, um, if you compare that to, you know, for example, like Xenoblade Chronicles X, I mean, or Xenoblade Chronicles, I'm sorry, the uh, the original game, uh, that one, when it came out, it sold 160,000 copies in Japan, and it ended up selling 430,000 copies in the U.S., even though it released two years later um, in, on the life of the, uh, of the Wii. So... Uh, it seems like at least uh, from this portion, um, the JRPG, in, you know, like side of Xenoblade Chronicles is selling well, uh, and it's selling in the U.S. as well in North America, which is a big deal for um, you know for Nintendo for Monolith stuff, and and that's why you hear that, Reggie, continue. selling well in America. Go ahead, sorry. Yes, so so yeah, I mean, uh, so so what would you say? Like, what do you think? Do you think that having 
uh, the Cinebreak Chronicles and the Cinebreak uh, Chronicles X series, maybe releasing a game each on each generation of, of Nintendo system. If one, is that possible? And do you think that would be a good approach from them? So it, I think it's possible because how they're split, right? They're working on UIP. But I don't agree that we need maybe two Xenoblades right now per per generation. I would love that, but then you're gonna get burnt out. You can get burnt out with it. You can you wanna do something else. So I want Monolith Self to do something else so they get away and then when they come back to Xenoblade, they got the creative juices flowing and you get a great Xenoblade game, right? I'll give you an example. Right now I'm currently replaying Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I wanted to replay it. After playing Torna, I haven't done the new game plus at all. So when I beat it, I only beat it once. And playing the game again with the Torna perspective coming on, it's it, 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 it enhancing my experience with the game where the story to me just feels better. It just feels great. Things happen and you know what's going on. So Torna was a great, great addition. And, it, and it's, it's making the original Xenoblade Chronicles 2 story even better for me. So they, they put a lot of effort in between expanding the Xenoblade Chronicles 2. It's a great game. Is it still better than Xenoblade Chronicles 1? No, it is not. Uh, you guys could kill me if you want to. But it's a great damn game. At some point, you're going to have some creative burn burnout from Xenoblade. And that has happened with Final Fantasy. And you can see how Square... Final Fantasy is not the same as it used to be. It's just bad. It's it's not a Final Fantasy 15 was not a good game, and more so you notice it when you're playing games like Xenoblade Chronicles 2. It was not a good JRPG. So, to me, I want them to step away, do something new, expand that your your fans. So then, when you come back and come back to a Xenoblade game, everybody's gonna be excited because it's new, it's fresh. So I do want the new IP, Kalinas, because I think the new IP, if they do it right. If it's Western, and I believe it's going to be more of a Western game, I'll bet you that because it feels that that team is divided right now. It feels they have the Western side of it and you have the JRPG side of it. I believe that they can bring new crowd. It could be the next Witcher or it can be an MMO or uh, include a feature like an MMO. They could expand the story, make it better, make it like a Monster Hunter. I mean, Monster Hunter has a multiplayer aspect of it but has a good story in the game that you can play without even playing multiplayer, right? So you, they can do that. They may be looking at Monster Hunter as an example. And trust me, a lot of times, Xenoblade feels like a Monster Hunter game because there's nothing better than going and hunting on this major unique monster or tyrants, if you're talking about X, that it's, 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 it's great. So I could see them going to Western route and then they're blowing up. Now, I wish, and it's a struggle, and I know, I understand. I always say that Monolith Soft, I'm happy that Nintendo bought Monolith Soft because Nintendo will know how to use the resources of Monolith Soft and Monolith Soft, I think it's happy to be uh, uh, to be bought by Nintendo or to be a majority stakeholder Nintendo because if a game fails in their calendar of games, because they know they're a niche developer, they're not Rockstar, they're not Naughty Dog, they're not Nintendo internal developed games, right? They're, they know that. But because they do help so much on Nintendo-made games like Breath of the Wild where they develop the world for that game, they get good money from Nintendo coming in that can sustain the base operation. It almost feels like Calionis that when they get the new Xenoblade Chronicles out game or whatever game, that's just bonus money. Because again, they helped out. You, you guys don't even know this. Mona Lisa helped out on the development of, of, of um, oh, God damn, I forgot the game. Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing, guys. Animal, Mona Lisa helping Animal Crossing. And I'll bet you $100 that they're helping again on Animal Crossing on the Switch right now on, on the development, on that team. Again, there's one team that just works on Nintendo first-party games. So, again, I think it's good. I'm happy. But I do wish sometimes, Calionis, that we would see what Monolith Soft could do with a more powerful hardware. Sometimes I do wish that. I Sometimes I'll be like, damn, I imagine if this game was, you know, with a power of PlayStation or Xbox, how, it would look, it will, it will, how good it would look. But at the same time, I'm still happy that they're with Nintendo because of what just explained. Because Nintendo knows how to use the resources that they need to do. But again, it is what it is. But we shall see. Anything to add before we move? Uh, no, I mean, it's, uh, we're on the same page. We're just wanting, uh, I mean, of course, yeah, if we could, um, a lot more uh, from modern stuff than, yeah, that we can get. 
yes, um, you know, they made Xenoblade Chronicles 2 about two years after Xenoblade Chronicles X. And there, you know, they made uh, in six months after uh, Dorna, which is, it feels like it feels like a complete game, right? You would say that Dorna, the Golden Country, is a complete game or close to it. It is not Xenoblade not Chronicles a, I would 2, say this, not a complete uh, game for an RPG, JRPG in the sense of how expansive. But that game is easily a complete game against a triple A, you know, 12 to 15 hours type of game, right? So, yes, in that case, it is, but it is not because in reality, once you beat the game, you notice that it's a supplement story to Xenoblade Chronicles 2. But at the same time, they didn't have to do a lot of changes that they did, like changing the battle system. They didn't need to do that. They could easily keep the same battle system, and, and that is it. But they made, they still made some improvements. They made it even better, they made it even faster. So, again, it, it just shows you how fast they work, right? And it's, it's just, again, it's, it's Square struggling to pull out Final Fantasy VII, right? And Kingdom Hearts finally, supposedly, is coming next year. But this Monolith Soft team doesn't get enough respect for how fast they work. They have work on Breath of the Wild. They're working on the new Animal Crossing, I'll bet you, because they did help a lot on the last Animal Crossing. They're working on a new IP, and they just finished Torna. How many projects they're doing in one house? Got to be honest, that is a lot of projects to take in. So God bless them for their hard work. Anyway. And with that said, we're only 46 minutes in. We've been talking a lot about CW8, those two news. Again, there's not many news. So with that, Kalionis, let's move to Onuma's news pairs. So Kalionis, what is the first piece in Onuma's news pairs today? Well, and the first piece of news from Anova's and Nintendo's you know, news burst is that Panic Button says that, you know, like working on the Nintendo Switch has been, quote unquote, really challenging, but that they like a challenge. And to address the uh, the specific quote, they said, uh, we like to make projects that are special for the target hardware. And Nintendo Switch is a cool device because you use it on the go, you use it, dog, and you use it in both modes and move back and forth. Uh, so we've done things with the control schemes and motion, but also bringing these AAA big titles in their true form to this hybrid hardware has been a real, really challenging. We like a challenge. It's part of why we go after these things. We wanted to both broaden these, uh, those properties, availability to a whole new group of people, but we also wanted to broaden the Nintendo Switch as a platform. We really feel like core games make so much sense on that hardware that we want to bring those over. Uh, so, yeah, like... Um, uh, and this is uh, something that, you know, like, um, it was another piece of news, and it's that they did an update on uh, Wolfenstein 2. Uh, I think it was, it was yeah, the 1.2 well, update. Warframe. Huh? Warframe. Warframe? It was Warframe. You, you oh. think of Warframe, where they improved the code so well on the Switch version that the studio of Warframe took that code and said, oh, god damn, you guys are good, and took those improvements and sent it to the PS4 and Xbox version of the game, so... Yeah, you're thinking about Warframe. But again, that just shows you the talent of Panic Button, how they're maybe not developers are creating their own game, but they're technical, well-versed uh, development team. They can take any port and just make it better. They remind me of Bluepoint. It's Bluepoint and Panic Button are the two best port team in the world. And then now you've seen the expansion of Bluepoint, where Bluepoint took The Last Guardian... Well, The Last Guardian, sorry. <laughs> Shadows of the Colossus. And made it a remake. And expanded on that game. And made it even looking better. I am excited to see Panic Bottom taking that same step as Blue Point. Imagine them. Maybe they're the ones who take, give you an example, Cinebreak Chronicles uh, 1 remake. And they remake them themselves. Because they know they understand the Switch. Calionis, best than anybody seems in the industry. No one can compete with them on, on porting a game. So, I don't know. I want to see Panic Button, what they can do with a remake from the ground up. That will show the true talent of that team. Okay. Then, uh, well, I guess um, uh, I did get yeah, the, the piece of nukes confused. Uh, but there there, uh, there was indeed uh, an update to Wolfenstein 2 from Panic Button. Uh, they just released it. And I think it's a 1.2 update. And they have improved how the game looks. And the uh, the gameplay as well. So I mean, they had already done a great job on the game, but they have improved uh, upon it as well. But yes, uh, about the uh, the Warframe and how it not only improved the Nintendo Switch game, but it also 
the uh, the PS4 and Xbox One version, that tells you of yeah their dedication and 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 their work ethic and and their quality of of work. So uh, at some point, I wouldn't be surprised that you know that they'll come up with their own games. I know that they're carrying so much hype about the you know the work they're doing that people would expect their first uh, you know big IP to you know to be kind of like a big deal and and be critically uh, and you know, and a commercial success as well. But we'll, we'll see. I mean, I'm just happy that you know they're taking these challenges with the Switch and that for the most part uh, the games that they're porting over uh, look and play amazingly. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, and the next one is that um, yeah, this is uh, Reggie uh, Fisame, and he was talking about yeah, you know, I guess um, in uh, because of yeah, Nintendo and its 129th birthday. Uh, yes, Nintendo's old, uh, but uh, he was talking about how Nintendo needs to uh, reinvent themselves uh, each and every time. So uh, he said that you know a few days ago Nintendo celebrated its 129th birthday. Uh, 129 years old. So this is a company that has reinvented itself constantly. Many of your speakers are talking about invention of new companies. We reinvented ourselves every five, ten years. We have to in this fast-moving entertainment business. Um, so um, Nintendo, yes. Uh, some people may not know that it is 129 years old, and they started with uh, with playing cards. So, so you know that that was the other uh, first business. They even went to uh, other businesses like you know like cap driving and selling toys that look like Legos and and things like that and they you know eventually moved on to what it is you know the Nintendo Entertainment System and what they do uh, to this day but uh, it is a company that they've in a way even though you know some people may criticize them because they don't have like the uh, the most powerful hardware. And they're not up to date when it comes to the the latest, you know, uh, technological, uh, you know, like uh, steps or anything like that. So no, that's that's not how they are right now. But they are always thinking about uh, the best way to give new experiences uh, to the people and to not make it something that they're just you know doing the same thing over and over again. So um, this is, I'll say, something that I'm glad that they do, but at the same time you would be a little bit worried um, for the Nintendo Switch because you feel like maybe, do you think their need of reinvention is going to make them go away from what they have right now, which is working great, and is the uh, the portable hybrid you know, home console aspect of the Nintendo Switch and go with something completely different uh, on the next go-round? Uh, so that's one of my worries. Uh, and uh, hello, Cool Drummer. Uh, welcome to this chat. Uh, so... Do you have anything to say about this quote from Reggie? And what do you feel about what I said that they'll go away from what they do with the Nintendo Switch in a time that it is something that works and that they should probably stick with it? So we'll go quick to this news first, but I will say two things. So Reggie, what he says is going to sell that they're innovative, that they're trying to do something new all the time, which is fine. I think Nintendo has something with the Switch. I think Nintendo just also needs to balance the innovation with just taking best practices from other companies to make your console better. Don't be different for the sake of being different. That could be a detriment to Nintendo because when you hit it, you hit it well like the Wii. But when you don't hit it, you can hit it really bad like the Wii U. Two perfect examples back to back, right? So again, we shall see how it goes. Uh, about what you said, uh, let me think, what, what was the second question? I'm sorry, I, I think I lost my train of thought. Well, um, I mean, that, that the Nintendo has something that works with the Nintendo Switch, yeah. and do you think that they're usually reinventing themselves is going to make them go away from something that's working right now? No, I think Nintendo can hammer down, they may add something new to the next one, but you see the, the DS to the 3DS that wasn't a huge reinvention. It was still a DS, just that it had 3D. They may add something like that. I think they will continue. I think they tried to do that with the Wii and the Wii U, but they read the market really bad, so they got destroyed on that one. But I think that DS to the 3DS was, I think, a pretty well success, even though at first it started really bad, and then they changed things, and it got way better. Uh, so I think they're going to hammer down with the Switch. I truly believe that the next Switch 
is going to be another portable, powerful console, but with a caveat. That could be, that could be VR. That could be, uh, I don't know, a new wave to play the games. Uh, we don't know. But something you'll see, but with the same concept of the Switch. Okay, and uh, moving over to the next piece of news. And this one is, you know, it comes from uh, a new competitor that came out of nowhere. And it's challenging the Nintendo Switch and that you can say that Nintendo should be scared that they're going to be taking the market away from them. Uh, and this is, you know, it's, um, I don't want to, I don't know how to pronounce it properly, but it's uh, Huawei. Um, and it, it is, uh, I mean, a big maker of electronics. Uh, they did come up with a new portable machine that they said it is a better portable machine than the Nintendo Switch. Uh, it is one that has a 7.2 screen compared to the 6.2 screen of the Switch. Uh, you can play 1080p or you know 1440p graphics on the screen. Um, it has 4 to 6 gigs of uh, internal memory, 128 gigs of uh, internal storage, and a $900 price tag compared to the $300 of the Nintendo Switch. So I want to say like uh, something real quick. Yes, uh, you can have something that the specs are better than the Switch. I mean, you can say that some tablets uh, or phones right now on paper have better specs than the Switch, but the Nintendo Switch is a dedicated gaming machine. It is specifically made for games, and you cannot expect something like that to be able to run games like you know Breath of the Wild or Super Mario Odyssey or things like that. If it were possible, you would be seeing those games on phones and tablets already. The closest that you can get to it is by using apps like you know Rainway or some things where you can stream your home console to the tablet or the phone. But uh, people, don't be afraid. Nintendo's competitor or true competitor is not here yet. I would probably start worrying when the Vita 2 gets announced or something like that, but uh, right now, uh, no, Nintendo well, is safe. The the rumor says that Sony's coming back, but it's going to be more of a tablet itself, not a docking tablet. If you want to buy a tablet that just takes the PS5 games with you, so you're going to have the same games working on both. So basically, by cloud, you can send the PS5 game to the tablet to play on a lower resolution or just play it in the console, but there's two separate. You, you want to buy the tablet? That is separate in itself. It's an interesting concept. They're a little bit different than the Switch, but that could be different because having like a Spider-Man Calionis portable with those graphics, that, that could be really good. But we shall see how that goes because Nintendo knows how to sell the handheld market. And, and, and Sony has tried in the past with power to push in and they never defeated Nintendo on the handheld market because... I don't know if it's the fun factor or what is the Nintendo games are just so perfect for handheld play. But going back after that with this Y way or whatever the the hell they're called. First, you're not getting Nintendo software on it. Software is what sells hardware. And if you don't have fun games, you're going to have the shitty phone games on on, 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 on this. It's not going to sell. You can't sell this. Sell it as a phone. Then you have an adaptive that you can make it into a Switch and say that, okay, that's better, than come out during your keynote and say, we're coming after the Switch. Switch is $300. This thing is $900. You ain't taking no market away from the from the Switch. And uh, Cool Drummer, I appreciate it. Appreciate the nice comments. Uh, you've always been uh, supportive of this channel for a long time, so appreciate it. Uh, anyway, kind of, let's go to the next one. Okay, and the next piece of news is that uh, Rocket League's cross-platform profile uh, has been delayed until 2019. So, um, you know, they were uh, working on a Rocket ID and what this would be, you know, make it possible. Or, uh, you, you know, for those of you that have played Fortnite, for example, you have the uh, your epic name. Uh, you log in, you have your profile, you uh, put your uh, Nintendo Switch um, uh, ID or you put your PSN name or your Xbox gamer tag. And you add those to your profile, so that way uh, you can connect on different systems and you can do cross-play with with other systems. So uh, for Rocket League, uh, they're coming, you know, uh, Psyonix, they're coming with a Rocket ID, which is going to make it possible to do cross-play 
Uh, they were hoping to release it before the end of this year, but it has been delayed until next year. Uh, they're working on it. At some point, it will be releasing. It's just going to take a little bit longer uh, than everybody would want. But, of course, you know, Rocket League is uh, one of those games. And I'll say outside of uh, it's a game that people have, have been asking for cross-platform play longer than Fortnite ha even has. So um, hopefully at some point they'll have it ready. And hopefully it will be sooner rather than later. But it's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, I'll say not big deal. Now is when you're going to start to see, hopefully, uh, a, an influx of games uh, supporting cross-platform in between Switch, Xbox, and uh, PlayStation. Uh, but for Rocket League, it's just going to take a little bit longer. Yep, we shall see. Go ahead, Carlos, on the next one. Okay, the next piece of news is that uh, the Super Nintendo World construction has begun. No, uh, we're not talking about the one being built in Japan. This one is being built at Universal Hollywood Studios in California. Uh, so they uh, they release, um, I guess, a, a picture of um, where they're you know doing the construction. Uh, I feel a little bit sad because I, I was hoping that the next one was going to be the uh, Universal Studios Orlando, and they were going to be starting on it right away because that one is a lot closer to me than you know than the one in California. But still, uh, with construction on the way, and it is uh, 2018. Hopefully, this means that perhaps there's a chance that they can have it ready by 2020, which is when uh, the one uh, in Japan uh, will be ready as well. Uh, but don't really expect to see it uh, until like two to three years from now. You going? Uh, but if if that one opens before the one in Florida, we're, we're both going. Um, you and me, we're, we're going over there. We're going to do one of our getting and get on the Nintendo podcast. We're going to do it from one of the hotels in there. So trust me, we will be there. Okay. Okay. We shall see. Let's first be alive then. <laughs> anyway. Or, or or have the uh the YouTube channel still yeah uh, like open and not yeah, you know, close for business. Yeah, that's 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 gonna be we're trying. Uh we're trying to get to a thousand. Guys, help us out because this has been a rough month. Rough month. We're still like fourteen away for a thousand. We wanna get to a thousand. Maybe we break that barrier, things will get better, but it's been a rough, rough month with subscribers. Uh anyway, Calioles, uh let's go to the next piece of news. I believe it's the last one, right? Um, uh, yes, it is. And I want to say, yeah, hey, uh, happy Halloween, uh, Natalia Murillo. Um, and she just spoiled that Team Treat won on the Splatoon 2 Splatween Splatfest. Uh, just uh, so too many S's at that time. But cool. uh, yeah, I guess you know, congratulations to Team Treat for winning the Splatfest. Uh, I'll say Toys uh, or you know, Inkling G, she was with Team Trick. So it is uh, sad for her that her team did not win. Uh, but congratulations to the other one. She'll get and over jump it. In. Yeah, <laughs> uh, she, she will. The kids, kids always do. Uh, but uh, going over to the last piece of news, and this is from the UK charts, and it is that Super Mario Party has slipped to number seven on the chart. And this is, of course, because there's uh, two new entries on it. Uh, the big ones, of course, being... The number one game of the week, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, which is also like, you know, the number one game in the world, anyways. Uh, and WWE 2K18, which came in at number four. So you have the, um, yeah, just to say the uh, the top 10 games, uh, you have Call of Duty Black Ops 4, FIFA 19, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, WWE 2K19, Forza Horizon 4, Spider Man, Super Mario Party, Crash Bandicoot, the Insane Trilogy is still there. Uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe are the top 10 games of the week. Yep. Uh, again, not many news this week, so I, just, I was I was stranching news. Oh, this is not a big news, honestly. Well, I'll say, uh, let's, let's do one more uh, before we close out. There is a rumor going around that there will be a Nintendo Direct somewhere in between the 5th and the 12th of November. Uh, if that turns out to be true, then it's going to be a direct that's going to be before uh, Pokemon Let's Go and before Super Smash Brothers, you know, Brothers Odyssey. Uh, Odyssey, Odyssey, Super Ultimate. Smash Brother Odyssey. Yeah, I don't mean it. That's a yeah, new Super one. Smash Bros. Ultimate uh, releases. So I wonder what those Nintendo Directs are going to be about. I don't know. Like, it's, I mean, it's, it's probably not even worth discussing because one, it's still the rumor. We don't know when it's going to come out. 
And if you're going to ask us what they're going to show in it, it's, it's going to be Pokemon and Super Smash Brothers. There's what else is going to be shown. So, yep. yep. Yeah. I agree. We shall see. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it more in depth once they officially announce it or if we got more concrete rumors. But anyway, with that said, Carriones, we're done with Onuma's news purse. Let's quickly, 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 let's quickly swish it up. No pun intended. To Chigero's Supermarket. Go ahead, Carlos. What are the hottest games in the market today? Well, and uh, we got, I guess, uh, quite a few amount of games uh, releasing this week. Uh, and now, I guess uh, I'm going to put uh, a hard line uh, release on here. And I'll start with the ones uh, releasing from the 15 on, onward. So we have NBA 2K Playgrounds 2. It's one. We have Warriors Orochi 4. Valkyria Chronicles, Starling Battle for Atlas, Rapala Fishing Pro Series, Lego DC Super Villains, Exhorter, Crayola Scoot, Big Butt Hunter Arcade, The Jackbox Party Pack 5, Zarvot, Will A Wonderful Life, The Room, Siberia 3, Spider Solitaire Black, Spencer, Sinner Sacrifice for Redemption, Season Match, Personality and Psychology Premium, Pass Apart, uh, Pass Parts Out, The Starving Artist, Mamonga, Pinball Adventures, Drift Legends, Blackbird, Arcade Archives Ninja Kid 2, Neo Geo Strikers 1945+, Plus, Tied Together, The Legend of Evil, Pizza, Titan Ultra, I Hate Running Backwards, Dark Souls Remasters, and the game of the week is... It's kind of a hard one. I don't. I think um, the world ends with I, you. Well, well, you're thinking all too hard. Well, then the world ends with you is mm, when did it release? Uh, last week. I don't know. I thought it was this but, week. Last week. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll do this. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and look it up quick. And the game. Uh, the. I don't know. Like I don't even know why it's not on the list. It is it on released, the list. I send you. Did anyway, the world is with you. It is the game of the week. We're done. We're done. To me, that's the game that I want to play. Uh, there's a lot of good games that came out. Barkira Chronicles, I'm hearing good reviews. Uh, Starlink for Atlas, also good reviews. I guess good enough. But uh, the world ends with you I, 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 in listening to it. It seems like you should play it portable mode. Don't play it dock because you're going to have a lot of problems. Oh, the game is... I mean... It's the tale of the of two faces. Doc, the controls are bad, but in portable, it's awesome. So there you go, guys. If you're gonna play it again, play portable. Well, the the game they released on the 12th. That's why I, I said I was gonna start on the 16th. So I, I didn't say mention the game because it came out technically last week, not this week. It's all uh, good. But, it's all, I'm messing with kind of. It's all good. But hey, yeah, but hey, Dark Souls right now uh, on Metacritic it has an 84 score for the Nintendo Switch version of it. That's good. Uh, so, Pretty so this, I mean, it's it's a game that it's great to play on the portable, but it's also bad because it's one of those games that you want to try the controller, but in this case you're going to be trying to your system itself. So just be careful. I Don't disagree with you a little bit. I think, I think a Dark Souls game is better to play a dock on the TV. That's just me. That there's games like I don't like to play Xenoblade unless I am grinding portable because I want to see the full world, right? And games like that, like Dark Souls, I want to see the full world when I play it. But portable, again, if you're grinding because you grind too in Dark Souls, hey, that, that's the that's where you get the benefit. But now games like The World Ends With You and East 8 and stuff like that, those games, I think, you, you should, again, they're not graphical powerhouse. So, again, those games are really good portable. But with that said, we're done. Caliones, let's put that sweet Sinobe music. There you go. I like to close the show with a little bit of sweet music. And you know, as I replay this game, I just noticed how awesome the music is in Sinobe Chronicles 2. It's just it, the, right, the right music always shows up at the right moment in the game. Anyway, with that said, thank you for coming in and watching the Get In and Get Out Nintendo podcast episode 66 right here at the Forcing Unison Gaming Channel. 
Uh, please remember to subscribe, like, and comment so you can make these two crazy MS happy. Uh, I don't know why the thanks for watching and subscribe is not working. Well, then just put more emphasis on it and say it out loud so, so they do. Yeah. I may have enough virtually to eat it. Yeah, looks like I don't see any on, there. on my list of uh, media source stuff. So I enough virtually deleted it. So anyway, <laughs> I'll fix it for next time. But thanks for watching and subscribe, people. Subscribe. Anyway, with that said, uh, remember you can get this podcast on SoundCloud and iTunes for free. Uh, rate us over there so you can show us some love. Also, go to the description box below so you can see the full channel schedule. Remember, tomorrow I'm back. I will be playing Spider-Man. So uh, come and join us. And that DLC is coming next week for Spider-Man. You want to play it. Uh, it looks fire, Calionis. Well, um, uh, you got the Platinum Trophy uh, on it. I did get. I, yeah, I got the platinum. I just. So I, I just now. I, I don't have a hundred percent anymore. But. But are you gonna get the trophies for now? Those those other trophies. Are you gonna go for them? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Of, course. of course. There's one that came out. That if you play New Game Plus, you have to beat it in the new Ultra difficulty. So uh, I may do that too, so I can keep the hundred percent on the on the on the on the trophies. Hey, maybe if they have the Ultra difficulty, you can just go ahead and scrap uh, the gameplay you've done so Spider Man and start with the Ultra difficulty. Like the, the new series of videos. Well, I I wanna I wanna finish the story. Well, at least finish one walkthrough because I haven't finished Detroit Become Human. I haven't finished God of War, and I haven't finished uh, Spider Man. Spider Man. So do something like that. Don't worry. We'll we'll figure it out. Uh, anyway, also go to Facebook at Forza Unison Gaming, and finally, and Nantes says finally. Uh, go to forceunison.wordpress.com and give some clicks and love to my boy Calione. With all that said, thank you again for joining us. <laughs> he plays with his toys. Good night, everybody, and long live Nintendo. See you guys. <laughs>